there's so much to talk about. You are a star to watch, and you're all over IMDb. You've got <laughs> you've got quite the resume already. Um, let's start a little bit further back in what actually got you into acting. Okay. Well, I grew up in Coquitlam, British Columbia, about 25 minutes out of Vancouver. Uh, and my mom put my sister and I in acting class when uh, I was probably 14, Kelsey was probably 12. And uh, so her and I would go down to acting classes, uh, you know, after school. And my mom always said, if you guys become actors, great. If not, um, hopefully you'll develop some people skills and some self-confidence speaking in front of crowds. So it was one of those things that my mom sort of put us in as like a character builder. And for me, it turned into a career. And for my sister, she, uh, she didn't end up sticking with it. She's now a registered nurse at uh, BC Women's Hospital, which is a heck of a job in itself. Uh, but it started off as like a character builder, and then I started doing some uh, plays in middle school and high school, and it's just sort of progressed from there. And you've been in a number of series uh, with recurring roles, which you don't always hear about. I mean, you know, first jobs and that. Mm -hmm. It takes you a while to build into that, oh, yeah. but it seems like you just jumped right in there. Well, my first uh, paid role was a guest star on a show called Romeo, which was a heck of a job. Uh, I had four or five days on set, and... And uh, it was a great way to start things off. And then from there, I had a bunch of actor roles, which were like one line, two words, you know, very small bit roles, which I was super happy to be a part of. And, you know, it's, it's been, a, it's been f 15, 14, 15 years of just sort of uh, constantly building my career and, and uh, ups and downs. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be here and still working and, and uh, you know, partake in this festival. And we were just talking about uh, Letter Kenny a little bit, uh, filmed in Sudbury, Ontario. Yes. When you, when you became a part of that, did you think that it would be what it is today? My good buddy Jared Kiso was the writer and creator of that show. He did a YouTube series many, many years ago called Letter Kenny. He told me he wanted to develop it into a TV show, and when he did, he wanted me to be in it. And, and, and you know, you hear a lot of people want to get stuff done, right? And you, and, and you just take it as is and then a few years later he he called me and he says hey buddy the show's going i want you to put a black wig on come to sudbury and we're gonna we're gonna make six episodes and then those six episodes got some traction and people really enjoyed them so then they ordered some more and then and then they ordered some more and and we just got renewed for 40 more episodes uh, a few weeks ago congratulations can you tell my viewers a little bit about your character in the show? Sure. So my character is, uh, his name is Stuart, and he is uh, the town meth dealer. He is the lead of the skids. Um, so there's four different factions. There's the Hicks, hockey players, skids, and the Christians. And it's how they all uh, intermingle in, in, in a small town. Uh, so it's very Canadiana, uh, unapologetically so. Um, and uh, my character, uh, I, I like to consider him sort of the evil villain of, of, the, of the show. And it sort of, it pushes boundaries. It takes that script and it goes further than some shows do. When you saw that, was that kind of like a, cool, I've got some flexibility here? Oh yeah, we did an episode in season one called Fart Book. And uh, it was so ridiculous and off the wall that we knew at that point uh, there was no limit that we couldn't push. Uh, and with the characters now, they give us all sorts of freedom. So we'll do the scene a couple of times, and if we want to improv or try something different, they will, they'll give us the opportunity. And, you know, worst case scenario, they tell us to stop. Because, <laughs> you know, that's I've been told to stop on a number of occasions. But, uh, you know. That's so cool, though, because it not only is it fun for you guys, but it helps us as viewers see who you truly are and where you're coming from and how you put everything together. Yeah, absolutely. And they always say, uh, you know, as an actor, when you're improvising, it's it's coming from you. You know, it's your thoughts and it's how you're feeling. Uh, so it's it can uh, imp improvisation can often lead to some raw uh, moments. <laughs> I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Uh, now, with the Whistler Film Festival, um, one of one of the big talked about movies is Story of a Girl which you are a part of, yes. directed by Kira Sedgwick. Yes. What was that like? That was so cool. Uh, I met her at the callback um, for, for the movie. Uh, we sort of crossed paths in the hallway, and we just started talking for a few minutes to the point the, where the casting director had to come out and get Kira to go back into the room so we could actually do the audition. And, mm -hmm. and it, was a very, it was a very supportive room. Uh, the material's a little touchy. 
Um, so I'm happy to know that uh, I was happy to know that she was on board with that. And and at the end of the audition, she got up and gave me a hug, and a and, and I left the room saying, if I don't get this job, I quit. You yeah. know, <laughs> I've done something wrong, and I don't know exactly, what. Exactly. Yeah, that was a goodbye hug. I'll never see you again. No. <laughs> And it does, as you said, it's, you know, it's a sensitive subject. It, it touches on bullying, which is huge right now, especially when you incorporate cyberbullying yeah. into everyday life. Why was that important to you? Well, I, um, I'm a couple years older than the characters in this movie, so I didn't really have to deal with cyberbullying. I, of course, dealt with bullying like every other person who's ever grown up ever. <laughs> but when you factor in the, the, the mass... Uh, emails and the mass sending of, of, of files um, and someone's reputation can get ruined in a matter of seconds. Uh, this story in particular I think did a great job of, of telling all the sides to the story. It wasn't just, uh, it is a story of a girl, but it wasn't just her story. It was the family story and how they deal with uh, their daughter being bullied, the, the, the young boy who was involved in the incident, how he dealt with the repercussions of, of the uh, of the incident, um, so it uh, it was a nice, well-rounded story, and I think you'll uh, see that when you watch the movie. And where does your character come into the whole plot? Well, um, he uh, he is uh, romantically linked with uh, with the girl uh, Deanna in the script, and they're sort of working out their uh, their issues that they have with one another throughout the movie. And getting into that role, was there a certain a certain amount of steps you took to get into character. Yeah, well, I, um, you know, I I could relate to certain things in the story, not necessarily through myself, but through circumstances that my friends have gone through in high school. And, and I, I have a friend of mine actually a few years ago who went through not the exact same situation, but a situation in which, which he was falsely accused of something and how the repercussions of that uh, just trickled down um, through all walks of his life, through his work, through his personal life. And uh, and so I was able to take some things from my friends and their experiences and factor that into sort of maybe how this character would would work. Very cool. Now, with being a star to watch, uh, you are, like I said, in a number of things. But what's coming up next? What are you able to tell me about? Well, I'm currently, well, I'm not currently, uh, I was I was in Sudbury this morning uh, filming the next season of Letterkenny. Uh, we, have a, we have a season coming out on Christmas Day on Crave TV, and then these episodes we're shooting now I think will come out in the summertime. Uh, I'm also starting a movie next month called Rabbit, um, which is an independent movie uh, directed by Jesse James Miller, and it's starring uh, an all-Canadian cast. It's a very cool story about a man going back uh, and uh, sort of um, dealing with some some things that uh, that uh, uh, I'm trying not to give too much away. But he's going back to he's going back to an old community to just uh, right some wrongs. That's what he's doing. And I I, I play uh, a character in that community. And when it comes to the Whistler Film Festival and the Canadian community and how close everything is film wise, um, some people may not realize that it it really is like a small family. Um, why is it important for you to go to events such like this one? Well, uh, I'm seeing a turn in the last few years with Canadian content. I feel like it's getting the exposure that it deserves. We have some of the best filmmakers. We have some of the best writers, actors, producers, uh, crew members in the world. And I feel like our stories are finally coming to the surface. Being a part of a show like Letterkenny, where you get to celebrate being a Canadian to the, to the furthest extent. Mm -hmm. And, and we, have, we have stories to tell here, um, like this rabbit movie that I will be doing next month. And and uh, you know guys like Jay Baruchel are coming back to Canada to try and produce movies in Canada with Canadian content and Canadian stories. I have a bunch of friends I'm going to meet up with later tonight who are telling Canadian stories, and I think it's it's huge. We support one another. We have the talent. We have the star system. It's just a matter of getting the eyes on on the people. It's funny you mention that too because I remember years ago. You know, you'd turn on the TV, and if it was something Canadian, you could pick it out right away, yeah. and you could be like, "There's something about this." That's just not, it's not on point. Yep. But now you turn on Letter Kenny, you turn on any Canadian show and you're like, this could be oh yeah. anything. Oh yeah. um, it's just, it's such a difference. Yeah, and, and, and I think people are making a step to do so. Jared Kiso, who's the creator and writer of Letter Kenny, wanted to make a Canadian show. 
he actually played Don Cherry in a miniseries, and I played the younger version of Don Cherry in a miniseries. So he and I are very proud to be Canadian, and in this industry, you feel compelled to go to the States to make it big, you know? And it works for a lot of people, and it's a great route for a lot of people, but just feeling compelled to do so, I, I, I think that that is changing in our industry. Which is so nice, because the amount of the amount of Americans or Australians or, you know, anybody else that you speak to, not Canadian, and you say, um, can you name me five Canadian actors? They can't think of them because they automatically link them with the States. Right. You know, Mike Myers, Jim Carrey, they don't even, no, I, I know. it's never come across as Canadian. So it's yeah. great that we're turning that around. Absolutely. And you look, at, you look at all the big movies, there's Canadians all over the place. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds, Seth Rogen, you know the list goes on. Ryan Gosling, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. I just I watched that. I watched that uh, Wild Jim Carrey uh, documentary um, uh, yesterday, and he's a, he's a Canadian. He's you know proud to be, but he he you know you do see him more as an American now than perhaps as a Canadian. But anyway. Well, I'm glad that you're taking that step yeah. to to prove that you're Canadian yeah. and to do it all here. That's awesome, and in a small town like Sudbury, yeah. wicked. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank I have uh, one more question okay. that I tend to ask each guest. Okay. It's actually about your socks. About my socks. Yes. Okay. I think socks tell a lot about a person, oh, no. and I would like to know what type of socks you wear. Uh, well, I'm currently wearing long black socks because I didn't know if I was going to have to dress up or not today, okay. so I wanted to be versatile. Uh, but uh, I, I, I try to stick to black socks these days because... Um, you know, there's nothing more embarrassing than getting to a party, taking your shoes off, and having some like white and gray Puma ankle socks on. So that's true. That's a that's a very good point. There's nothing wrong with wearing those to the gym and in uh, certain places, but uh, you know, uh, festivals like this, these are my dress socks. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, that makes sense. It's good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank Tyler. You. You're welcome.